Five months ago on this spot, two Pigtown teenagers, 17-year-old Emerald Smith and her best friend, 16-year-old Courtney Angelus, were crossing Martin Luther King Boulevard just before midnight when they were mowed down in a hit-and-run accident. The two were transported to the Maryland Shock Trauma Center, where they died a short time later. Within hours, a familiar scene repeated itself. Friends and family of the two girls erected a memorial. There were homemade posters with both of the girls' names, a handful of signed condolence cards, and more than 40 teddy bears and other stuffed animals. The animals function as totems, according to Maurice St. Pierre, a sociology professor at Morgan State University. A teddy bear, for instance, is considered to be a friend, a friend of the child, that a child might use, a child might get close to that. He says the memorials are part of an emerging counterculture of mourning. These memorials haven't replaced churches, funeral homes, or cemeteries, but they have become part of the public mourning rituals for the younger generation. And that's disquieting to many local funeral homes, especially in the African-American community who've been called upon to bury the young, where murder and suicide are common. Odyssey Gray is a mortician with the Russ Funeral Home on the west side. There is a movement away from church, church service, and as a result of that, the funeral has taken on a new sort of uh, uh, component. Earth burial has diminished uh, uh, rapidly over the last, since I've been in it, it seems to, some of it's like I say is driven by finance, but others is driven by the fact that the, the life is, the, people are not celebrating the life. Gray says street memorials and vigils alone don't provide families or communities with the proper amount of closure. That's the monument, that's the, that's the, uh, instead of going to the cemetery, this is where they died. And, and we're paying our respect. When a person lives 40 or f however long they live, they, they develop relationships, they, they have loved ones, they have people who care about them. And when they are gone, the, these people need to be able to do something to acknowledge the relationship. And when it's not done, I don't believe that it leaves them in a healthy place. The phenomenon of street memorials appears to be here to stay like this one in the 2700 block of the Alameda near Lake Clifton in northeast Baltimore, where a handful of teddy bears, dolls, and balloons have been tied to two trees on a traffic island that runs the length of the boulevard. They are reminders of a vigil held on the evening of July 13th, just hours after two-year-old Janaya Nicole Ludd, who lived in the neighborhood, died. Shelbert Hayes, who lives across the street from the memorials, described the tragedy. The car was coming down the street, and it was kind of wet, so the car hydroplane came up on the curb, hit the tree over there, spent the round, and a little two-year-old baby flew out the window. Were you on there? Were you I was on sitting on the porch when that happened. I asked Hayes about the memorials that remain. Do you think it helps out, or do you think it makes things worse? Do you think it makes any, any difference at all? Well, I mean, you know, people in the neighborhood, if someone passes away, they show their respect to that person and to their family by holding a visual for them. I think it's, you know, just showing kindness and love towards the family. Road memorials in Baltimore and elsewhere haven't replaced funerals, but they have become part of a death ritual observed by a younger generation, and they are likely to remain as long as they fill the needs of the community in which they are erected. I'm SUNY Collard reporting in Baltimore for 881 WYPR.